please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hey now, it's your girl Shanita Nicole, and welcome to Do Dream One if you're new, and if you're already a dreamer, welcome, welcome back, y'all. Welcome back, welcome, welcome back, y'all. Welcome back. Okay, today we are going to be going over Canva tips and tricks. I'm really excited because this is very beginner friendly. I just want you to know I will be doing more, but this is beginner friendly. Okay, Canva tips and tricks for beginners. And I am so excited. If you guys have been watching me, you all know I love Canva. Canva is my jam, okay? I love it. I use it all the time. Now, I am not, I want to be clear, I'm not going to go over everything with Canva because I have a few other Canva videos and I also have an intro to Canva video. So I will put that link somewhere on the screen and in the description, description so you can check that out. Okay, so let's just go ahead and jump right into these tips, okay? Because I'm ready. Okay, so the first tip that I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to be giving y'all a few different tips. <laughs> I'm going to give y'all some free tips at the same time, too. Um, but, okay, the first tip that we're going to do, we are going to show how to remove a background from an image. So I did upload this image here. I'm going to put that image on the screen. I just clicked it. I am using a Mac and I do have the Canva Pro version. So just so you know, I do have the paid version. I also have a link down below because I'm a Canva affiliate. If you want to get that information about um, joining Canva, you can try it for free, see if you like it. Um, or get the pro version. I prefer the pro version, so I do apologize. I'm going to be doing pro version tips on here. Okay, for example, the first tip is how to remove a background, and that is a pro tip. Okay, so we're going to click the image that we want to remove the background. We're going to go to effects, then we're going to click background remover. One click, let Canva do what it does. Okay, and boom, it has been removed. Easy peasy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, now here's the second thing you can do. If you see here, it says select a brush. So let's say we want to erase more. We have a brush here. It shows a number and then it shows the size of the brush. Okay, so let's say we wanted to remove more. We can remove more. Uh oh, we made a mistake. Let's say we want to restore. We can restore as well. Okay. Now this apple, I am going to restore that, but let's cancel. We're going to click here. We're going to restore. The only thing I really want to restore is this apple. Okay. All right. So that is how, and actually I'm going to erase some of this table. And let's say you make a mistake, you can press that back button. Oh, it went all the way back. Let's have it remove it again. It's doing switch. Okay. The only thing I do want to restore is this apple though, because <laughs> whatever the background is, it'll come on the computer. All right. So that is the first tip, how to remove the background in Canva. All right. The second tip, I'm going to press done and Voila, voila, magic. The next tip that I'm going to do is show you an easy way to add text, a circle, and a line, okay? So we're going to go ahead, press apply, that's done. We're going to click on our canvas, and we're going to press T on the keyboard. That's it, that's all. We press T, okay? And then it brought up the text. All right, so we did that. Now, here's the thing I want to, you to be aware of. You can also go over here. Now, in that first video that I linked that you saw, I went over all of these, um, all of these elements over here so you can know what those are. But you can click there and it'll bring up text as well. I just showed you a quick way that you can bring it up. I'm going to click here add a page and in the previous video I showed you how to do that as well so we're going to bring up T for text okay we're going to put hello 
And then we're going to put C and it's going to bring up a circle. And then we're going to put L and it's going to bring up a line. These are all elements that are strictly a quick shortcut by using your keyboard. Now, once you have the elements here, you can change the colors, you can change the font, the size, uh, where it's placed, all of those things. And I went over this in that first video as well. So you can change it to whatever you want to change it to. Something that's new that I do not believe was on that first video is the width and weight of the line. So this is something that's really, really cool. You can change the lines and you can put what's in the beginning and what's in the end of the line as well. Okay. So that's something that I do not believe was on the first video that I did. So that's something that's new. All right. And these are just quick links to add text, a circle and a line. That is tip number two. Okay. The third tip I am going to provide is how to lock an image. Okay, so let's say we're playing around with this and we don't want the circle to move. Okay, we're going to center it. See those magenta lines? We are going to go ahead up here where it says lock and we're going to click that lock. So now you see there, it this will not move. We can move everything around it. And that will still not move. Okay. So that is how you lock an image. So you can make sure it doesn't mess up or different things like that. All right. So the next tip we're going to go over is working on a brand kit. So this is really, really cool. In regards to if you are um, doing logos or if you have a brand or a business and you want to do a brand kit, we are going to go to home. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and look down here where it says brand kit. I did mention this in the previous video as well, but it's okay. So these are the brand logos. Any logos you created or made or uploaded will go here. Your brand colors would go here. I'm deleting that because I don't know what who brand colors those are. <laughs> this is an IG palette. Um, you can look up more information here. This is my YouTube colors, what I use. This was for one of my clients. Um... And all of these colors have something called Hicks Code, which we talked about previously. And I've talked about in several of my videos how you can find the specific colors. Okay. Then we have our brand fonts here. And then uploaded fonts. So we upload fonts here. And this is called a brand kit. And I'm going to name it because previously I didn't. So do dream ones. So you can name them too. All right. So this is my brand kit that I use. All right. Now we're going to go to our next step. Our next tip is going to be saving folders. Okay. So if you want to organize your information, you can save them in your folders and you can create new ones, but this would be all of your designs, likes, purchases, purchase, things you've purchased, um, if someone shares something, your logos, a bunch of dreamers, these are just a nice way for you to keep yourself organized and know what's what, okay? So for example, I'll click this here and then there's several different, and it shows you how many numbers or how many pages it is, okay? So for this one, this is my actual planner. Get out of there. So that's my planner, right? And I created that in Canva and it's just showing me and keeping that folder in here if I ever need to come back to it. So that is amazing. Okay, I press that X to get out of it and now it's back to folders. So that is our fifth tip. Our sixth tip is going to be frames. Okay, so 
let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how we will create a frame. So we're going to go into elements and then we're going to go down to frames. Okay. We're going to see all. And then let's say that I wanted to put an image into this laptop here or a book cover, whatever you want. But we're going to use the laptop. And then this, when it has this like picture background with the grass and the clouds, that shows you you can put a photo there. All right. So I'm going to put this. This is my Instagram page and i'm trying to get to ten thousand there the name is do dream on so please follow me on instagram follow me on ig so you see how i double click there we can rotate we can move um crop the image is there okay so that's how you would do a frame and i'm going to show you a different frame too so we're going to go back to frames and i'm going to do a book so let's say we were doing a book cover we're gonna go to uploads and then I'm gonna pick this image here I'm gonna drop it inside the book and there you go now it's a frame all right so that is our sixth tip now I'm gonna go ahead and go to our seventh tip our seventh tip is going to be our drop shadow or our glow effect okay so we're going to come back to this picture here and then what we're going to do is i'm going to click the picture highlight that i'm going to go to effects and then i'm going to go down to duo tone here's a tip if you have not seen this you want to go down here to see you may also like and then whatever you click here it'll populate there okay and excuse my computer i don't know why it's going so slow it's tripping so you see this right here you press connect and then now glitch is going to be one of my options here because at first i didn't have duo tone anywho we're going to go to duo tone we're going to select that you can choose whatever color background that you want for the glow i'm going to show you two really quickly so oops i didn't mean to do that I'm going to go to undo and then I'm going to duplicate, press the three dots and duplicate my image. Now I'm going to click the image and I'm going to go to see all again. I'm going to go to amber because I want it to be um, an orange glow back background for me. Okay. You see these options. Anytime you see those lines, they're filters. So you can do the change, all the different things like that with the filters. We're going to go to the top to adjust and we're going to make it bright, really bright. No, not that bright. We're actually going to make it not so bright. I want it that, that way. And then we're going to blur it. Okay. You can make it really blurred. For this, I want it kind of really blurred so it can look like that glow. And then I'm going to make it larger than the original image. I'm going to come back to the original image. And voila, magic. See that? Now, here's something that we can do. I'm going to show you actually our eighth, <laughs> our eighth tip how to group images at the same time, okay? I'm going to click away from the images. I'm going to drag a line to the image. You see how I group both of those? Then I'm going to go and press group. And if group isn't an option, you can press those three dots. But I'm going to undo it because I want to make sure it's right. All right. So you see how we have like that effect. If I want to make this smaller, I think I want to make it a little smaller. I'm going to click the image again, scoot it over. Now we have a glow. Click outside of it, draw that line, group it. But I want this to be white for what I'm doing. And then I want my background. So I'm clicking my background to be black so you can see the glow okay now you have the blur effect now i'm going to duplicate the page i'm gonna make this back i'm gonna make this actually pink take that away and then i'm gonna ungroup it 
and then I'm going to go back to duotone because let's say you just want the white glow. I'm going to click CR and then I'm going to go to classic. Okay. We're changing the filter of the glow. All of these different colors will show different glows. I'm going to go to adjust. I want this super bright and I want it super blurred. Okay. And now we have the classic white glow going there. Oh, I think the word. I'm just copying and I'm pasting it here so you can see it. Okay. So we have two different glows and you can make different glow colors. And we grouped. So we did seven and eight together. Okay, so the ninth tip that we're going to go over is how to create a team. So let's say you're doing this for work or for a group or different things like that. We're going to go back to home on Canva and we're going to go to create a team. Here, if you want to create a team, it's going to break down the admin, temp designers, members, etc., you can send a link, you can get an invite link, or you can put the people's addresses here. So that is specifically for um, making a team, inviting a team. And if you add additional people, it does cost $6.99 per person over four. So you get four in a group. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's four in a group. And if you want to add more. So that's how you can create a team. And once you get that team, you can go back and forth and share things with each other. So now we're getting to the 10th tip, and that's sharing. So let's say I wanted to share these images. I could go ahead and put in with other designers, other people, etc. I could put their name or their email, and then I can copy link or I can... You can share your designs inside of Canva. And to see who shared things with you previously, previously, you can go here and you see people share things with me. We've shared things before. Okay? So that's how you can do that. All right? So that's sharing inside of Canva, which is really, really cool. Okay, our 11th tip is going to be how you can find company logos. So let's say that you're trying to do um, Instagram or Facebook logos. You will go to elements and then you can press X to clear everything out. And then you can put in Facebook logo and voila magic facebook logos will appear are all, all types of facebook logos that you're looking for you could even change the color so a lot of times with my you know my colors are pink and different things like that i change it to match my um uh, my colors right so then this is something called a magic recommendation when you select certain things and you see how it says that pro with the crown there when you select certain things, they give you recommendations because you know they're not going to let you talk about Facebook without talking about Instagram and Pinterest and Twitter, different things like that, okay? So it provides you the different options there so you can create whatever it is that you're looking for with that. And what's really cool is you see sometimes they let you change the colors. You see they let you change those, but they won't let you change this one. You will have to look up a different Instagram logo to see which one you can change. You see that? So sometimes they let you change it. Sometimes they don't. And the way you know they'll let you change it is if this box comes up here to allow you to change the colors. Okay. Oh, and then there's a cool 
I love when this happens. There's a cool thing that you can do too is, let's say that you want to change all of the things that's black on your image to pink. You see right here, it says change all black to pink. So anything that's black, instead of you clicking everything, if you click that there, it'll automatically change. My record button is over here. <laughs> so it's, it looks like it's blocking it. From being from allowing me to do it there we go okay how I the system I used to record is right at that bottom over here so it wasn't allowing me so you see how I did that so anything that was black it changed it to pink so that actually is a quick way to change all colors that's tip number 12 that allows you to do that on the bottom of when you're actually changing colors and different things like that okay okay so tip number 13 I'm going to show you how you would be able to measure things precisely okay so if you're like me and you want things to be measured really really good we're gonna do that I'm gonna change this to black I'm gonna come down copy this command C oh it's locked so I can't do anything when it's locked I'm unlocking it command C I'm on a Mac I'm copying that command V I'm pasting so really that's that's another one so copy and paste but we're gonna just give you that I'm gonna give you that one for free okay so I copied and pasted that welcome, and then I'm actually going to go to elements, exit out of there, and I'm going to go to flowers, okay? And then I'm going to pick, what flowers do I want? This flower, okay? So I'm picking this flower, okay? I'm going to make them smaller so they can fit. Now I'm going to delete these and then duplicate them again. All right. So do you see those magenta lines? Those help, but there's a better way that we can make sure things are precise as possible. If you saw that, I went to file, I went to show rulers, and it is show rulers, show guides, okay? These guides came up. I'm going to click on there and bring it down. Boom. I'm going to click here and bring it over. Boom. So these are the guides to show you, okay, are these level correctly? Are they, ah, there you go. You see how that magenta did? It makes sure that things are level correctly and it's all on the same page. So you can bring more down. You can make sure everything is as crisp as possible. I love this tip okay so this tip is technically measuring things adding grid lines so everything can be precise all right okay 14th tip is how to filter elements by colors so we're going to click elements again i love me some elements and we're going to do flowers again okay so we're going to go to flowers but we're going to go to here. You see that? That's the filter, the lines and the dots. And we're going to look for pink flowers. You could do square, vertical, horizontal, static, animated, availability, free or pro. This will help if you're just looking for free things. If not, you have to pay. We're going to apply filters for all of the pink flowers. And like I said, my computer for some reason is going slow. So I do apologize. But that one up there shows that the filter is going. So we just have to wait for my computer to catch up. Come on, little computer. Come on, Tink Tink. Get it together, okay? Bam. So now we have all the pretty pink flowers. So y'all know we go swipe this out, right? I'm about to swipe them out and give me some pretty pink flowers. There we go. There we go. All right? And if the grid lines are still there, if you want them to be gone, guess what you can do? Just move them back. Uh -oh. Just move them back from where they came from. Move them on out. Slide them back over. 
to get them out the way. Okay? And there you go. All right, that's how we filter the elements by colors. Let's clear that. Exit out of there. And that is our 14th tip. Now, our 15th tip is going to be changing the transparency. So let's say we want to do the flowers. We're going to go here. You see that? Transparency. We're going to go to the transparency and we're going to change it. So look at that. All right. And that is changing the transparency. I'm going to change this one to another one. All right. And then I'm going to go to the 16th, which is going to be changing the positions. First, let's go to file and let's take the rulers off. Okay. So now I think I want one more flower. So I duplicate it there. So now let's say if we want to change the position of the flowers, we will click on the flower, we will go to position, and you could push that one back. Or you could push it forward. Back, back, forth, and forth. Let's push that one to the back. You see how that changed? This one, watch when I click it to the back. Look how it's going to do. And it goes all the way to the back. See? So now it's adding that depth of field there. Okay, so that is changing the positions and transparency. That's 15 and 16 at the same time. Okay, just something I always do is I always go to file and I save it, even though a certain amount of time it automatically saves. I always make sure that I save it because with Pro, look what you can do. You can actually go to version history. So that's going to be tip 17 for pro only you can check out a version history of your different see it shows the current auto save when it auto saved all types of things it shows the date the time how many pages it shows everything here so let's say i made a mistake and i wanted to go back to 35 minutes ago i can go back to that one and it will bring it up that has been a life changer change the game for me okay i mess up i'm doing something my computer crash something happens then you could always come back to it all right so that was tip number 17 to change um to go back to different versions of your projects okay all right now we're going to go to 18 and that is going to be creating smart mock-ups okay so 18 is creating smart mock-ups you will have to go to those three dots at the top you see where it says share you have to go to see all you have to go down to smart mock-ups you see all this other thing like look at all these other things it can do i'm only giving you a few Smart mockups. You do have to go to smartmockups.com before doing this. Sign up. I'm on a free trial and I'm probably going to pay because it reminds you of Place It, but it's all connected to Canva. So they did a wonderful job. I'm going to use image page, I'm sorry, page number five, and I'm going to type flowers. That's going to be the name of it. So let's go back. Smart mockups. Page five, I'm going to save it. It's going to show preparing your design. And then it's going to give a couple options. It shows continue editing, go to your homepage or view and smart mockups. So go to view and smart mockups. And here we have, this is basically kind of like place it. It shows all the mockups. So it's professional product mockups for all of your digital and printed projects, right? But look at this. It could do t-shirts, smartphones, magazines, books, laptop frames, mugs, face. But look at this. The image that we saved, it automatically made the mock-up for all of these. And look how sweet that is. And of course, you can browse. You could go ahead and um, crop and edit. But look how sweet that is. It automatically 
did it for you. That is amazing. They didn't even know what I was using it for, but they said, don't worry, boo. We got you. Whatever you using it for, we got a mock-up for it. <laughs> That's what it was saying. So you can browse. We're going to just go to mugs for the sake of this. And then look, it's all the mugs. Look, oh, and it's a flower and a flower. Stop playing with me. Christmas time. Look how cute this is. This is amazing. Oh, they don't made me. I'm probably about to leave place. And look how many of them it is. It's a lot. Tons of them. Okay. So that is creating smart mockups uh, with smartmockups.com inside of Canva. This is every team. Okay. Every team. And then it shows you all the different things it can do. It's really cool. All right. So that is smart mockups. Now we're going to go to our 19th tip. And for our 19th tip, we are going to animate our image. Okay. So you probably noticed this. I'm clicking on there. When you do that, that's that turquoise thing it shows is highlighted. I'm clicking on here and you probably notice this animate thing, right? So we're going to go here. And if you don't want none, if you want to do a block. If you want to do a fade, a pan, let's let it come all the way through, okay? Then the, the um, crowns, those are, oh, that's cute. So you could do this for anything, for your YouTube videos. You could do this for your Instagram posts, um, for literally anything. You can add this in anything that you want. And it just shows you different ways that you can make this into an animation, okay? And it shows you the time. So you can adjust the time if you want. Okay. So that is animations. Okay. And then we are going to go ahead and show you for our 20th is adding audio. All right. So we're going to add audio into our project. So for the audio, I want to use this one, okay? So I'm going to highlight this, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Uploads, because you will upload. Come on, computer. We almost done. You go to Uploads, and there you're going to, you can upload your media there, or you can go to Audio. I recorded this earlier. So I'm going to click my audio and drop it on there. Thanks for watching my YouTube video. So there, that is how you can add audio. What I did was I recorded it on my Apple head. <laughs> I recorded it on my uh, memo and my iPhone. And then I just um, dropped it on down to, to my um, Mac. And then I just uploaded the image, okay? And dropped it to whatever I want. So you can do this um, for anything. Guys, we're winding down on the tips, but I have a couple more for you. Let's say that you do create a team, right? And let's say that you want to leave notes to your team members that you're working on. So this tip is how to add notes. So on here, the way you would do that as you see, you click the image, you see this here, it says you can add a comment. So you can add a comment, you can ask a question, what do you think about this? Not then about it, what do you think about this, right? Add the comment. Somebody can reply to the comment once they save in it and share it and you can just play around with it, edit the comment, delete the thread, etc. But if you're on a team, have a team, you and the team can leave notes to each other throughout the process. Okay? We are going to go over um, text effects. Okay? So we're going to duplicate this one. We're going to make this pink. And then we're going to go to effects. 
And then we're going to go to style. They can have a shadow. You can't see the shadow. Here. Oops. Undo. Let's change the background. So effects. And we're going to have a shadow. We can have the offset. See how big it gets. change the back maybe I'll change the color you see that a in the color we can change it to black so then you see that the effects we can even change the color of the effects right now it's pink we can change it to orange and then look at that look how big or small the offset is okay the direction it could go from left to right depending on what it is you want then that could be a blur too. See that? All right. Let's go back to effects. Then it does the transparency. See how large that is? How blurred it is. Then we can also go. Sorry, if you click off of it, it'll click off. We can do it hollow, splice it, echo. It shows all the different ones. Glitch, neon. You guys, I use this neon all the time. And then we could do the intense, the intensity. How intense we want it. We also can do the shape. So here's the curve. So I'm giving y'all a two for one. It's at a hundred percent. We could curve it either way, whichever way you want. So those are the text effects that we can use. I don't want this color. I'm doing Command C to copy, Command V to paste, and then you see do both of them. And I'm doing it over her, but since these colors, I want to do it to where it can match. And I'm going to click the background, and I'm going to do it black. Boom! That looks completely different. Like, look how different that looks. All right, that's the text effects. Now we can also do is the next tip we are going to show you. You see how these elements are really, really close, and you have to switch them all around and figure them out. To get to the images behind the other images, you would have to press, I'm on a Mac, it would be Command, and then the left, I'm sorry, Command, and then the left mouse click. So now, you see how it doubled it, and the actual square is on the second, um, I'm sorry, the actual square is on the second triangle. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to change that color. You see that? I'm behind it. And let's say I want to go to the next one. I click command, hold command, and I go to the left mouse again. I click it again, and now I'm on the third triangle, and I'm going to change that color. Okay? So if you have elements that are stacked on each other, you press on a Mac, command, and then the left mouse click. If you're on a PC, you would click whatever is the equivalent to command. The key is called Alt, A-L-T, is equivalent to command. Okay, so that's how you would change that. Okay, and that is my Canva tips and tricks video. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please holla at your girl. I can do more of these videos if you like. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. Please join our Facebook group, Queen Dreamer. We love it over there. Um, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys for taking your time out and watching this video. If you have any other videos you want me to do, please let me know but yeah y'all i love y'all y'all know that i love y'all and y'all be safe out there you hear bye thank you for your time please like share and subscribe bye